It's the nation's favourite antiques experts. Which way are the bargains? Behind the wheel of a classic car. Do you know where we are? <laughs> and a goal to scar Britain for antiques. Act one, scene one. The aim, to make the biggest profit at auction. <laughs> but it's no mean feat. There'll be worthy winners. We're in the money. And valiant losers. Art. Broken. Close your ears. Will it be the high road to glory? It's just delightful, isn't it? Or the slow road to disaster? <laughs> This is Antiques Road Trip. Yeah. The stunning majesty of North Wales beckons for two very feisty road trip rivals. Did you miss me? Arita, I've been writing you, I've been texting you, I've been calling you. And I been ignoring you. Oh, that's <laughs> nuts. Not a good way to start a road trip, OK? It's been no time at all since Irita Marriott and Raj Bisram last butted heads. And would you believe it? They're back for more. What do you think of Wales? I love Wales. I mean, look at the mountains. Do you come to Wales often? Oh, yes. You do? My and my family, we love Wales. We come here every single year, at least twice. Unfortunately, the only word I know in Welsh is a raff. Do you know what that means? A raff. Slow, slow. And I'm amazed that I know that because that's not really what how I am. That's probably why you've heard it a lot. People going to you, a raff, <laughs> a raff. <laughs> well, there was no go slow when last they met, as battle lines were drawn. Okay. Oh. What were you, pirate? Kentish auctioneer Raj made some of his trademark eclectic purchases. To be honest, I have absolutely no idea what this is for, but it's certainly got age. But was no match for Derbyshire dealer Irita's keen eye. A bit of shiny. Oh, my. She won the week, and while they both had fun... <laughs> You're in the way! <laughs> oh, sorry. Raj is off to payback. This is a new one. And I honestly see a different result at the end of it. Oh, oh, yeah. so in the first five minutes, you're already heading straight in there. Yeah, I'm not saying you it got to, to me, but <laughs> I'm going to win this one. To do that, you'll each have a lovely £1,500 budget to play with. But that's got to last you the whole trip. You also get the keys to this 1960s Van der Pla princess. Stylish, eh? Oh, oh, oh. I'm travelling round Wales with two princesses. <gasps> One driving, and I'm sitting in one. Oh, Raj, that's a good start, you know. Suck up, why not, first I, I, day. <laughs> totally, totally. Right, let's get down to it, shall we? For this trip, we'll wander around a good chunk of Wales, mooch across the Midlands, and head east towards Norfolk and Lincolnshire before a final auction in Market Harbour. I'm really looking forward to this one. But for this first foray, we'll be keeping it to Wales. They'll be shopping all the way to Denby, but their journey starts in the countryside around Carnarfon. Not a bad little spot to go antiquing. Very scenic. This is my favourite bit. Is it? What, yeah. going into the... going into a shop? I know! Oh, look! Oh, look, a dragon. I'm going in with two dragons. Oh, thanks, That's Rod. Did you say it? Oh! <laughs> He's a cheeky little devil, isn't he? Luckily, there's plenty of room in the Blythe Farm Emporium to keep these two separated and enough stuff to occupy them for quite a while. No pressure. Got buckets full of money. With seven dealers plying their trade in here and Deborah and her husband Tony on hand for advice, I'm sure our two can sniff out some treasures in no time. Oh, this is so cheesy. That's Raj's kind of joke. Yeah, I can and bear them. Not very mature, is he? Narita, to be honest, you're looking a little bit half asleep. You need really? You need waking up. I need to sit down now. Oh, my lordy. <laughs> Enough hijinks, you two. Serious business to attend to. This is a ship stick barometer by Becker of uh, Hatton Wall in London, so it's a really good maker. Beckers, I believe, were founded midway through the 19th century and were in operation till early part of the 20th century. 
The barometer used to measure atmospheric pressure was invented by Evangelista Torricelli, a student of Galileo back in the 1600s. His first attempt used water instead of mercury, resulting in a barometer measuring 35 feet tall. Now, I'm no barometer expert, but I do know one thing that I've been drilled into me, that you should always keep barometers upright because they've got mercury in them and they can leak, etc., etc., and it's a very expensive operation fixing them. I mean, I think this one needs a bit of fixing anyway. It's got some sticky tape here holding the thermometer on. At a price tag of £225. But there are collectors, and if I can get this at the right price, there might be a small profit on it. You'll need to attract a dealer's attention, then. Tony! Yep, that'll do it. This has caught my eye, Tony. Um, this stick barometer. S tell me, first of all, what do you know about it? Uh, it's only been in the shop three or four days. Uh-huh. And it was only hung up yesterday. It's, it's, it's a little bit different, you know? It's not like the, the normal barometers, the Banjo or the Admiral Fitzroy ones. It, it's slightly different, but there is some damage on it, cos, I mean, have you noticed they've got sticky tape holding the thermometer on here? I'm going to just ask you, what would be the very best on it? Well, the damage in mine, I can get that for 80. Eighty pounds. Yeah. Put my hand there. Thank you so much. To take that to the. Yep. Counter. And remember, always, always keep, keep them up. Price, Absolutely. Yes, know you know. You know that. That's one farage. Any joy for Irita yet? Pottery. A lot of Wedgwood pottery. Now we got the classic Jasperware. I mean, not a bad seller. Not the best. So if not that, which? This, when it comes to Wedgwood is not a norm. John's Keeping was an amazing designer in 1930s that created this whole range of animals, so simple, yet so stylish. John's Keeping was part of the influential London group of artists, as was his then wife, the sculptor Barbara Hepworth. These now are actually reproduced and faked. So you've got to be careful when you are buying one. This has all the signs of the real deal, though. It has that little bit of crazing that shows the age. It has the marks on the bottom. It has the name impressed at the back. And a ticket price of £68. And even though the white glaze is not the most popular one, I just love it because it's so striking and so of the 1930s. And I'm going to go and see what I can buy it for. So, let's take it to the Tillman. Deborah. Hello, Rita. What do you think of my monkey? I'm not sure about it myself, but it's obviously uh, a thing. Well, I'm not going to monkey around and I'm going to see what can you do on that price tag, if you can do anything. 68. OK, I'll speak with the dealer. OK. I'll get straight back to you. Thank okay. you. And while she waits on that phone call, Raj is still bending Tony's ear. Poor Toto. You've got three albums. There's cards missing, etc. There's a variety of all, all sorts of things, flowers, etc. Places. Uh, There's no price on any of them, so... Ah, there is. Nice one, Hawkeye. £20 each. I didn't see that. Yeah. OK, so what could you do? What could you do them for, then? If you're having a three, I can do them for 30 30? Mm. Yes, we have another deal. Thank Brilliant. you very Thank much you. indeed. This is, you're making my life very easy. And if that's everything, let's pay the man. So, the albums, the barometer... And the barometer, yeah. I believe that's £110. Perfect. And with £1,390 left, things are set fair for him. Now, back inside, any news on that monkey? I tried to listen in. Ah. Uh... I could well, hear you laughing, though. <laughs> you initially said 50p off. 50p! But I managed to haggle him down. OK. And he's happy to accept 45 Oh, pounds. well. You, you're a good haggler. Ah. Do you want to come with me? <laughs> <laughs> Here's the 45. Lovely. I'm very, Thank very you. happy with that. All the best with it. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye. Another satisfied customer with £1,455 still in hand. Now, keen for some local culture, Raj has parked his shopping and has headed south from Carnarvon to the little place called Nant Gwytherm. This idyllic and isolated bay is home to a very special educational establishment that's been crucial in the fight to preserve and promote the Welsh language. 
and it's where Raj is hoping to pick up a bit of vocab. Sorry. <laughs> it's always hard being the new kid. For over 40 years, this school has been offering intensive courses in the Welsh language, with keen students coming from all over Wales and across the world each with their own reason to learn this ancient language, like Gemma. So I guess it's part of my history and culture. Um, my gran told me before I came here and she was really proud uh, because nobody has spoken Welsh in her family for quite a long time, so she was pleased That's that I was giving it a go. Yeah. The school caters to learners of all levels, from beginners to fluent first language speakers, but to catch up to the class, a little one-to-one -one tuition from teacher Suan might be in order for our man. What are you going to order in the cafe? Uh, a piece of cake. A piece of cake. OK, so you'll ask Gai Gakan. Gai Gakan. Gai Gakan. Gai Gakan. And you can order something to drink? Cup of tea. OK. Gai Banad Ode. Gai Banad Ode. Gai Banad Ode. Oh, fantastic. Could come in handy at some point. Now, to find out this centre's role in protecting the Welsh language, Raj is meeting up with Rodri Evans, the centre's education manager. I mean, Rodri, what a stunning location. I don't think I've ever been to a place of learning in such a location. Uh, it's, it's, it genuinely is magnificent, and, you know, we have around 800 learners every year come here to, to sample exactly this. Was the location for a couple of quarries, but then fell into disrepair when, you know, the need for, for granite um, disappeared. People were leaving the area, you know, the, um, industry had gone. So there was a bit of a brain drain, and with a brain drain comes a, a linguistic drain as well. The language had been under attack for centuries, ever since Henry VIII decreed that Welsh speakers could not hold public office. When the quarries here closed in the 1950s, the language was on the verge of disappearing forever. But with the formation of the Welsh Language Society in the 60s, the tide turned. They began to organise protests and acts of civil disobedience, fighting for Welsh to be recognised as an official language in its own country. And then this wonderful idea to have a residential Welsh language learning centre here uh, was founded by Dr Carl Klaus, a GP who came over from, from Manchester, wanted his young family to be brought up in a Welsh-speaking environment. So he, he realised that this derelict old village, this old quarrying village, could be refashioned into a residential Welsh language learning centre. So he and others, you know, they set about then to, to raise some funds to purchase the, um, the site. The school welcomed its first students in 1982. That same year, the first Welsh language television channel took to the air, all part of the groundswell in the popularity of the language that has continued to grow. Why do you think the change happened? I think we've had conscious decisions and efforts to, to preserve the language and to keep the promotion of it. You know, it's not, some, it's not some sort of museum piece, you know, it's a living language. In 2011, Welsh was finally given official status, and with the national football team making it to the last World Cup, the language is now being heard on a global stage. What's your hope for the Welsh language in the future? Well, I think personally, you know, that, that it continues to be a normal aspect of everyday life. It's the language of work, it's the language of family, it's the language of everything. So, yeah, if we can, if we can just normalise that across Wales and introduce it to all corners of Wales, then absolutely it's, it's, it belongs to everybody. It's estimated that around 30% of the Welsh population now speak the native tongue, and thanks to the work of the centre, that number is rising. Time to put our student to the test. Surely no lingo barrier can come between a man and his elevenses. <laughs> Hi, Heather. Hello. Did I hear? Dai panada dai ai kakan. How was that? Dai yam. Dandigadig. Well, I have no idea what that means, but I only hope it's good. <laughs> OK? I'll go and sit down. Oh, down. <laughs> By George, I think he's got it. Well, I'm going to find out if my Welsh is any good, because if I sit here and my cup of tea and cake doesn't turn up, it was a bit of a failure. Got it right. Helis? Diolch. Diolch o fawr. Mwynhewch. 
By St David, I think he's got it. <laughs> now, out and about in the motor, how's Irita feeling about being back with her bilingual buddy? I'd miss Raj. I'm not so sure whether I have missed his jokes, though, I have to say. They're just non-stop. Uh -huh. He's got a book full of them, you know. Well, he is out for a win. He has made it clear from day dot that he wants the revenge. Yeah, it's game on. She's popping across the Menai Bridge to the island of Anglesey and Beau Maris. This lovely coastal town was once home and inspiration to the Welsh poet Richard Clwyd, known as the Bard of Snowdon. And our girl will be hoping the muse will be upon her as she tackles Anglesey antiques and interiors. This is looking good. In you go, then. Hello there. Ah, uh, hello. Oh, I have to say, Irita, nice hello, to meet Arita. you. Hello, Irita. Stephen. This is looking my kind of sharp. Smashing. Yeah, it's a good one, all right. Room after room packed with some very grand objects. Oh, can I just move in? Love this place. Plenty to tempt an unwary shopper with £1,455 in their pocket. A map of Anglesey and part of Carnarvonshire. Yep, a coastal chart, to be precise. But it does look like an old one. It's like when you tilt it towards the light, it has kind of like a crackle where it's bent and, and broke from the heat. I mean, honestly, not a clue one is worth. Somehow that appeals to me. No price on it, mind you. Undecided, that's what that is. I shall carry on and see what else I can find. Yup, there's plenty more to discover in here. Wow. Filigree and porcelain book slide. Back in the day, they made beautiful things like this out of walnut, that you could pop your books in. And look, it slides out to adjust how many books you want to fit in. And the porcelain panels are actually hand-painted and made in serve factory in France. This would date from about 1880s. That's ticketed at £135. Something's a bit odd here. Oh, the whole thing's been repaired. Right, so this side is all original. However, the other side probably comes from a completely different book slide set. It is shorter. It has been fitted in, so it goes all the way to the end, but it doesn't quite close properly. Oh, what a shame. Still, a nice looking thing though and much greener to try and fix it than chuck it out. I'm going to pop that down. Maybe come back to it. That makes two undecideds. Can we make it a trio? There's a lot of itty-bitty things that are beautiful. I want some meaty things. Something with a bit of, you know, quality and wah-wah-woo. Wah-wah-what? Isn't that? Absolutely beautiful quality. Silver-plated inkstand. But it's not just inkstand, is it? Look at the design of that. Mid-1800s, English. The detail is incredible. So this would be on a gentleman's or lady's desk. You'd have your ink in there. It is just... Fantastic quality. I'm scared to look at the price. Be brave, Irita. 245 pounds. I mean, I said I wanted to find something meaty. You did. Better have a word with Stephen then. You have an inkstand, a silver plated one down there. Yeah. Have you had it long? Six months and I bought it for the collection. Okay. And it remains and the collection has gone. So what would be the absolute death on that one. It would have to be £150. Next thing, the book slide. Yes. What can that be? That can be £60. And in the other room, there's a map. It has no price on it. Uh, it's not a vellum map, it's a facsimile. Mm. And 
as a, as a facsimile, it's £28. That brings the bill to £238. Can you do any better on the three as a group? OK, the absolute end-of-the-day price is £190. £190 it is. Right, two, four, six, eight, ten, one fifty, one sixty, one seventy, one eighty five. That's all I had in my pocket. Carry on, that's I it. With uh, that's enough stock now. Well, this has never happened before. Never for me either. You're a very nice chap, Stephen. So, £185 buys you a map for 25 a book slide for 35 and 125 for that ink stand. A solid day's work all round, I reckon. Oh, I think I've done good. So do I. Now, back together again, and Raj is keen to show off his new linguistic skills. I'm going to teach you goodnight so we can say it together. <laughs> OK, I believe it sounds something like this. <laughs> Nasta Karia. Okay. So we do it together? Yeah. One, two, three. Nasta Kanyad. Oh, that sounded really good. It did. I don't think it's anything like that, though. <laughs> <laughs> A work in progress. Nasta Kariada. Nighty night, darlings. Another glorious day in Wales beckons for our two favourite Cambro files. Do you remember any of that Welsh you've learnt? I do, a little bit. I, I should say to you this morning, uh, uh Oh, well, that, that's a no, uh, then. <laughs> uh, what's good morning again? I don't know. All that tuition. Oh, yeah, Borada. Got there eventually. How are you feeling going into today's shopping? Very, very confident. Ooh! <laughs> Ooh, someone's woken up in the big boots. <laughs> was that convincing? Did it I was. Say that? Good, it I'm was. Glad. Good, I'm glad that was convincing. Well, if yesterday is any guide, you've got nothing to worry about, Raj. He made a solid start to his shopping with a trio of Victorian postcard albums and a 14 stick barometer. £80. Yeah. Put my hand there. That leaves him with £1,390 still in the tank. Our Rita was an even busier bee yesterday. She bagged a Wedgwood monkey, a Welsh coastal chart, a book slide and a very nice ink stand, as you do. I mean, I said I wanted to find something meaty. So, she now has 1,270 still to play with. Let's see what today has to offer, eh? The fact that we're in Wales... Yeah. ..and the national flower is... Oh, look, daffodil. <laughs> Too far. <laughs> I wanted to pick you a daffodil, but my arm... Oh, my arm is two foot short. <laughs> it was a nice gesture, Raj. I will pick you a daffodil. I'd love to pick you a daffodil Aww. to start the road trip Aww, with flowers. See, that's two days in a row you've done suck-up things now. Yeah, some people are so cynical. Later, they'll be taking all their prized purchases to an auction in Wrexham. But today, the hunt for shops continues, taking our pair to Flandidno. In the Victorian era, this little mining town was transformed into a huge seaside resort, earning it the moniker of the Queen of Welsh Watering Places. First to explore it is Irita. She's pitching up at Digby Antiques. Oh, there it is. Oh, my goodness, it's so cold. I need to get in there. Good morning. Oh, hello. That'll be the eponymous Digby the dog and Graham the shop owner, of course. Good morning, how are you? I'm fine, thank you, and you? Oh, I'm excited to have a look around. Oh, you're more than welcome. <laughs> and you won't have to travel far to do it. Snug is the word for this place. Packed to the gunnels with stuff to look at, mind you. I feel a bit overwhelmed. So many people looking at me. I feel under pressure. She's not used to an audience. <laughs> Now, a mere hop, skip and a jump down the road, Raj is making a beeline for the Lloyd Street Antique Centre. Time to try out your Welsh again, old boy. Borada. Borada, welcome to Clandidno. Thank you. Pleased to meet you. I'm Raj. I'm Penny, pleased to meet you. Lovely. Looks like there's a lot here. Can I have a look? After you. Thank you. Feel free. With 28 dealers under one roof and shelves groaning under the sheer volume of goodies, let's find out what Raj can rootle out in here. Here's a cabinet, which has got this uh, fine porcelain in. I wonder if it's open. Oh, yes, look, 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 it's open. And this is what we call Belique. 
And this comes from Ireland. It's Irish porcelain, and it's very, very fine porcelain. They are best known, really, for their latticework baskets, and those latticework baskets fetch thousands of pounds. It's very, very intricate porcelain work. So which bits do you fancy, then? These pigs are rather sweet. There's a lot of collectors of pigs, so I'm going to see what I can get these for. For that, you'll need Penny. Did you find something? I think so. Oh, what uh, have you found? The little pigs I found. They are rather gorgeous, They're aren't rather they? gorgeous. Yeah. Now, you have £90 on the ticket. Yep. What would be the very best on those? Oh, they are actually mine, so I could come down to 65 I was hoping that maybe you could do them for 50 <laughs> <laughs> it's not that bad. Oh, go on then, because I like you. You sure? That's ah, right, yeah. Nice lady. At £50, Wonderful. Pounds, I like the pigs. Those little piggies will be going to market. Now, not a million miles away, Irita has spotted something in Graham's storage area. All the stairs to you and me. I'm not as nimble and agile as I used to. <laughs> like Are you that. OK there? <laughs> I'm fine. This might take a moment. <laughs> Awkward customers, eh? It's just oh, the oh. rudder that's come off it. It does come off. Thank you. <laughs> you got your... Little paddle. Little paddle. I suspect it's something like uh, Indonesian, but... The shape of the boat makes you feel as if it comes from that side of the world. And it's really, really hard to tell what the age is on it. Well, I think it's got a good patina on it, so it would suggest that it's... It's not modern. It feels so nice, doesn't yes. it? Because it's all hand-carved from, from one piece of wood. How much is that? £65. Oh, I'm sure we can do something on that. That's what she likes to hear. Shall I put it here yeah, for sure. now? So you then have to climb back in and see what else we can spot. Back up the road to Raj. Anything else pinging his radar? Oh, I've seen something. Penny. What have we found? The Sovereign case. Oh, lovely. Is it a silver one? I think it is. Yeah, it's from myself, my silver lady. Mine's well, rather sexy, isn't it? Me or the sovereign case? Both, obviously. Oh. <laughs> Aren't they beautiful things? I mean, they're just gorgeous. It just shows you how, back in the day, sovereigns were so valuable mm. that uh, they had these lovely cases. And would made that for go them. on your belt or? Uh, probably, to be honest, round your neck. Oh, around your neck. Okay, oh, it's so valuable. This one. Uh, Nice decoration on it, in good condition. It's even got somebody's initials on there. Uh, you've got £75 on the ticket. What would be the best on that? I could do 65 again, actually. It's almost like uh, Groundhog Day it here. It is like okay. It is a bit, because how would you consider £50? Yes, I think that should be OK. Yeah? That'll be fine, yeah. In that case, my second deal. All right, lovely. Fantastic, Penny. Are you going to pay me now? I'm, I'm not going to pay you now. Look at you. <laughs> yeah, well, I've got. I owe you money lovely, now, lovely, don't I? Lovely, I owe you money. A straight hundred pounds, to be exact. It's been an absolute Thank pleasure. You Thank you very much indeed, actual. Thank you, Rod. Be on my way. Have a good day. Take Thank care. You. And with piggies picked up, he's off. Back at Digby's place, though. Well, there's a first time for everything, huh? Irita's abandoned that boat and is attempting the stairs herself. Oh my God! I made it to see what treasures lurk above. Mm. Oh, aren't they sweet? Little Shelley cups and saucers. Shelley is a great name when it comes to porcelain. They made tea sets, they made tableware, they made vases, decorative things. Fantastic quality. 1930s. With roses on. Loved the little loop handle as well. Very sweet. That cup shape was known as the Regent. I think I need to ask the price. Can you hear me? I can, yes. <laughs> I have found in a box... A Shelley tea set. How did you know? I've got good hearing. And it's not that big a shop. <laughs> you only got three cups and then ah. six saucers and six plates. Yeah, it's not, it's not a set, it's part set. They haven't got a price. How much are they? They're about 50. I'm trying to make it attractive. Shall I tell you what makes it attractive? Something that starts with the two, not with the five. Really? Yeah. What, 250? <laughs> <laughs> Good one, Graham. Maybe we should try this negotiation face to face. Oh, I made it down alive. I'm pleased to hear it. <laughs> now, question. If I only took part of it, the three trios, so if I would leave you the jug and six of the plates to still sell, that make any difference in the price? I'm happy to do either for 20 for the what you, you, you or 30 for all of it. I'll take the 
the trios for 20. Okay. You're a star. Thank you. So that's three plates, three cups, and three saucers for a score, leaving our reader's budget at £1,250. Oh, wait a minute. Does that mean I have to climb back up to get them now? Oh, dear. I think we'll leave her to deal with that and go and see what Raj is up to. Reveling in the delights of the Llandidno Riviera, that's what. Hello, Zolta. Who's going to win the road trip? Ah, uh, today is your lucky day, my friend. I hope for so. For I have a fortune especially for you. The wheel of fortune is spinning in your favour, and good luck will be yours within a couple of months. That isn't good enough, Zolta. I need to know within a week. You can't rush the mystic arts, Raj. And you're not the only one who's out for a parade along a prom. Oh, there's a wishing well. I cannot go past one. Right. I wish Raj's hair grow back long and luscious like mine so we can spend a day braiding it together. <laughs> I hope it comes true. It might take more than a penny for that wish. Meanwhile, the man in question has pinched the princess and is heading east to the outskirts of the market town of Denby. Denbyshire Antiques is his final port of call for this leg. No signs of any hair growth just yet, though. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Raj. Hello, Paul. Nice see to see you. you. Can I go and have a look around? Yeah, after you. Thank you. Paul's place is big on furniture and some very fine examples at that. And while Raj's £1,290 budget might stretch to an item or two, it's probably not advisable at this point of the competition. Up here, we've got all these warming pans. In the 19th century, instead of using hot water bottles, they put hot coals into them and then put them into the bed and they would warm the bed up before you got into bed. You know, 15, 20 years ago, I was selling these at 100 to 150 pounds. Now, you really can't give them away. Best avoid those, too. Perhaps Paul can give you a bit of a steer. Paul, I've got in the back office at last. This is an unmarked, possibly Laszlo or Ditchfield. I like it. I do like it. It's a belter. Yeah. It works. Brilliant. For over 35 years, John Ditchfield has been producing highly sought-after glassware from his Blackpool studio. This may or may not be one of them. It was made in around about, I would have thought, the mid-1990s. Laszlo worked for Ditchfield at the time. It's not an antique. No. But it's a real collector's piece, and you can see the workmanship and the quality of it. How much could it be? The best price, 225. Because it's not marked. I mean, I'll give you 150 for it. How about that? That's a fair deal. It was going to go on, but... I'll sell it, yeah. Brilliant. 150. Yeah. Thank you. Very kind, Paul. That final purchase brings his budget down to £1,140. Time to regroup with your chum and see if those follicular wishes have kicked in yet. Feels good already. I feel younger. <laughs> I feel younger already. <laughs> yeah. Works for me. Works for me. I will never Raj Bisram and see this. <laughs> Harry Mary, get some shut-eye now. We've shopped a bundle in Wales. Now it's time to sell it all back. Exciting. It really is, isn't Are it? Are you ready for this new adventure? I was born ready, Raj. <laughs> ah. That's the spirit. After skirting along the north coast of Wales, our journey leads us inland to Wrexham for round one in a best of five battle at Wingate's Auctioneers, selling to punters in the room, on the books and across the world wide web. Sold at 180. Arita spent 250 pounds on five auction lots. Let's find out if any of it grabs the attention of today's auctioneer, the Natalie attired David Griffiths. The Sea Serpent Ink stand, stonking quality this, really good, nice thing to see in the sale room. Lots of inquiries from abroad and this country. We expect that to go very well today. Raj parted with a bit more, £360 on his five lots. Any standouts, David? The Bleak Pigs, nice collectible things. Bleak's a good name, people look for as well, and a bit of fun, so yes, they should sell OK today. Let's get down to business, then. Seconds out, round one. Excited? First auction. <laughs> First Bring auction. it on. Yeah. Well, what can I say? I'm going to start like I mean to carry on. And how's that? 
long clues. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's your oppo up first. Raj's backroom deal, the glass lamp. And £100, not a bad start there, straight in at £100. He'll say 110 now. We're online, 110 bid, 120. Here, if you like, 130, madam. Go on. Go on. Go on. 130 if you like now. That's the spirit, 130 bid, 140. 150. It's still cheap, it's still cheap. 150 in the room, 160 now. Come on, come on. 160 bid, 170. Small profit. Yep, there we are, 170 bid, 180. 180 bid, 190. Yeah, 190 bid, 200. 200 is bid, 210. 220. Stop, stop. 220, 230. Say it a bit louder. <laughs> 230, 240 now. It's looks beautiful. Like it's the last it's one. A beautiful. Oh, back on now. 240 is bid, 250, madam. Yeah, 250 bid, 260. She's so not convinced, but she's going with it. Are we all done at 250 pounds? Uh... In the room then. <laughs> Sold at 250. Thank you, madam. What a way to start, eh? A shining example there, Raj. I did not think that she was going to go that high. She was reluctant at 140. <laughs> Next up, are Eater's Shelley Cups and Saucers. Worth tackling the stairs for? What are they worth? £30, not a bad start there. Straight in at 30 and who'll say five now? On the internet this time, against the room, 35 in 40. If you like them, 40 bid and five, sir. 50. 45 are in the room, 50 back in and five. At £50 pound of bids on the internet head. against you all at £50. Pound. I'll take five anywhere else now. Sold and away at 50 then. I'll take that. You poor. <laughs> yes, you should always go that extra mile when rummaging. More than doubled your money. Well done. Better than nothing. Absolutely. <laughs> Raj is hoping for a similar result with his trio of postcard albums. £50. Pounds. Come on. 30 then. 30 I have. Thank you to start me off. Only that is a lot for you, money. I'm being sold. 35 40 35 pound of bids in front then at 35. Oh, We're looking on. for 40 anywhere now. Still cheap. 40 bid and five, sir. 50. 45 of bids. Seated then at 45 pounds. 50 your last more. chance. Come on. Let's go for it. Sold at 45. Oh. Thank you, sir. Are you happy? Yes. Well, who wouldn't be? It's all going rather well so far. Anything that has a plus sign next to it, <laughs> I'm happy. Many ships, captains in the sail room. This next one's for you. You brought a sea chart. I did. Why? 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 Are you thinking of leaving the country? <laughs> I'll take 20 to start it. Come on. Come on. Nobody won it. £20. Pound. £20 pound of bids on the internet to start things off. Trade in at 20. Let's Full set sail. Five. I got Let's 30 set in sail. Now. Five. 35 in the room, 40. We're room bidding at the moment at £35. Pound. They're looking for 40 anywhere now. You're out at £35 in the room, then. Thank you, sir. Well, profit. That's really it's good. Absolutely. That was all ship shape and Bristol fashion. Maybe should have kept 20 it. 20 then, come on. 20 we have. Because I, I might need this escape route. <laughs> Raj's Balik Porkers are up next. Can he bring home the bacon? I just hope there's some meat on this one. Pounds, <laughs> okay. What are they worth? 40, 50 pounds, somebody? 20 then, come on, start things off. 20 we have. Thank you, sir, to start me now. Straight in at 20, it'll say five now. 25 then 30, and five. 30 pound, we're in the room currently at 30 pound. are looking for five oh, now. 35 afresh, bit of 40, and five. 50, and five. 50 pound of bids, standing at 50 pound. I'll take five anywhere else. Oh, come on, there was a bit more. Sold at 50. Now we can move on to what 40 No now. profit. Better than a smack in the chops, though, Raj. I'm not sure whether to smile or cry. <laughs> I would smile. Yeah. Arita's book slide next. No shelf is complete without one. Do you have book slides at home? Twenty. No. <laughs> that should be a hundred pound away on it, shouldn't it? Eighty, not a bad start there. Straight yeah, in at eighty pound. It'll say five now. We're on the internet. Eighty pound, eighty-five, ninety. Is it now? At eighty-five pound, ninety, just in time. And five. With the lady now at £90 a bid, just there at £90. I'll take five anywhere else now. At £90, you're finished. 95 just in time. 100, madam. You're out. It's online and being sold at £95 then. Fantastic. Well done. <laughs> she seems awfully pleased with that. Should we invent a little profit jiggy? Yeah, I thought you just did. Raj's sovereign case is up next. Hoping to coin it in with this one. £30, all right, I've got to start things off trading at 30 and it'll say five now. Room bid currently. Room bid at 35, 40 bid and five. £40 pound of bids in the doorway currently at 40 pound. I'll take five anywhere else oh, now. Come on. You're out. Sold away at 40 then. Mm. Thank you. Sad Raj. 51. Sad Raj. Oh, this is sad Raj. Nobody likes to see a sad Raj. Bad luck, old boy. 
It's Somebody. the first loss of the day. Yeah, I know. Let's see if our Rita's next one can lift the mood, her Wedgwood monkeys. I'll take 20 to start it, we have. Thank you to start me off trading 25 in 30. And 5, 40, and 5, 50, and 5, 60, and 5, 70, and 5, 80, and 5, oh. 90, and 5, 100, 110, 120, 130, 140, 150, 160, 170, 180. Room bid at £180. Are we all out? What happened then? Sold at 180 you, sir. Oh, well done. Well done. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. The bidders went ape for that. Can you believe that? I, oh, I, I, I saw it with my own well. eyes. Last stop, Farage, his 14 barometer. Is he feeling the pressure? Good quality one. There's going to be 100 away on it, somebody. 100 we have. Thank you to start things off. Australian 110 bid, 120 is it now? £110 of bids on the internet. 120 back in. 130 bid. 140 if you like. Ah. 140 bid, 150 now. 160. Against the room at 160 pounds. Take 170. Anywhere else now? At oh. 160 pounds, you're finished. Sold online then. I'm speechless. I told you, it was wow. hot. That would be a thermometer, Arita. An excellent result, though. Well done, Raj. That's got to be the biggest price for a barometer sold in the last five years. And finally, Arita's ink stand. The auctioneer was effusive over this one. This is my biggest spend. Sold in a way at 20. And I have to say, I'm a little bit worried. That should be a couple of hundred pounds, shouldn't it? Hundred pounds, surely to get this. That's a hundred pound there, isn't it? Come on. Oh, blimey. Oh. 80 pounds we have to start things off. That is being given away at 80 pounds. I'll take five anywhere else now. 85, 90. So cheap. And five. 100. 110. 120. Here we go. 130. 140. 150, 160, 170, 180, 190, 200, 200 bid, 220, 240, 260, 280. Is it a yes? No. 260 the bids with the lady then. Sold at 260 then. Oh, the great. Room. For a moment, it's a hundred pounds profit, isn't it? Please. Never in doubt, Irita, and I think we all know which way this one went. I'm not sure I can get up because my pockets are really heavy, full of money. Come on. And I'll tot up the totals. Raj's keen antiques eye was on point this time out. After auction costs, he nets a healthy eighty-six pounds and ninety pence in profit. Thank you. But Irita had an absolute barnstormer today. With sale room fees deducted, she's landed a mighty profit of £258 and 40p. So she claims victory on auction one, but there are still four more to play for. Uh, that was something. I thought that was great. Oh, it was it was incredible. Yeah, I, can't I mean, it. you got some good profits. We both did. Come on, let's Happy go celebrate. Days. <laughs> Onwards and upwards. <laughs> Next on Antiques Road Trip. Yeah. OK, here we go. And whoa! They both go off their trolley. <laughs> Nay! <laughs> Raj learns how to cope with his co star. Get down one end, stay well clear of her. Which is probably good advice, really. 